What's going on everybody? Come back. We're going to talk about these two cameras and why I got them and a little story behind these things. What's going on everybody? It's Patrick Midtown Outdoors. How is my outdoor crew doing? I hope this video finds you well. So, I'm going to talk about these two cameras. This one here is the Sony NEX5N and this one is the Sony NEX5R. This one came out in 2011. This one came out in 2012. But they're very different in a lot of ways. This one's really different in a lot of ways but they're very same in the body, the lenses they use, and microphone placements and all that. So we're gonna get on the workbench and we're gonna go over them a little bit more. And I'm gonna to explain to you the differences and trials and tribulations I had to go through on this 5R to get it to work. Okay, so let's get into these two Sony cameras. And let me tell you the differences between the two and what's not so different, okay? so. The 5N came out in 2011. The 5R came out in 2012. 2012, they made many improvements on the camera, but this still wasn't a bad deal right here. You still were shooting at 1080p at either 24 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Same goes here. So you still don't have 4K anything yet, but this day and age, I'm still shooting 1080p no matter what. Uh, because 99% of the time, people that upload or, or watch our videos are not watching it 10, or at 4K. They're doing good to hit 1080. Sometimes it's 720, even 480 is your max you can view, depending on your internet connection. If you've got a super strong internet connection, you might be able to watch it at, 4, at 1080 or 4K. But I just don't film yet in 4K. So, the fact that these are still 1080 and that's it, I'm, I have no problem with that. My first major thing with these cameras, when I, the reason why I got them, first they were hell of a deal on the, both cameras. This one had an issue that I will show you here lately in a little bit. This one had a major issue that I'll show you and tell you about it here shortly. Um, but the fact that they're super light so what you may see is well two similar cameras with two different lenses but they're actually the same lens just configured a little different they're both 18 to 55 millimeter lenses this one is what they call their compact size style where it actually extends once you turn the camera on and i'll show you that now when you turn the camera on that lens comes out and then all of a sudden it's the same length as this one. Even when you go from that 18 millimeter to 55, the lens virtually stays the same length. It doesn't change. Everything's changed on the inside. This one, when you turn it on, nothing really happens any different. Now what I have done, because these start out this one starts out at 49 millimeter as far as a filter this one starts out at 40.5 now i have got it necked up with filter rings up to 58 millimeter and i have a uv uh, protector on this one this one has a uv protector at 49 millimeter lens barrel now both cameras have dual microphones on top i haven't said it yet in the video i may have hinted around what i like so much about the microphones on top of the cameras like this especially the stereo microphones whether you're front or behind it you're gonna get good audio
On these, I highly recommend putting these wind muffs on them. I've shown these wind muffs before on onboard cameras, on onboard mic cameras. I like these and I don't like running the wind, electronic wind diffuser on cameras. I just don't like it. I think it muffles the audio. These pick up the audio just like they don't have wind and everything and it doesn't muffle, muffle the audio. So what's the major telltale differences between these two cameras? They're both 18 megapixel. This one the major thing with it is what its screen will do. Its screen will flip up in selfie mode. This screen will not flip up all the way in selfie mode. You can get it to there and you can get it to there and that's it. This one, the articulation is much better. That's one of the improvements they did on the R versus the N. I like that. That's, I mean, that, works out really good now some of the functions on the buttons changed but it's not so bad that you can't go between the two and not worry about i mean not worry about it they also give you function buttons whereas they don't on this one that you can make this you know do different things and you can make the spin wheel do different things where this one doesn't have that your picture take picture button is still in the same place on both cameras to record movies it's on a little bit different area but it's in the same area now i have hit this by mistake thinking i'm recording and i realize that i'm not <laughs> i'm trying to view the footage and stuff all the buttons on the back of the camera stayed the same as well Okay, so the major differences between these two cameras and why I got them so cheap, this one had a bad screen protector on it from the factory, or factory screen protector. The original screen protector looked much like this one where it says Sony at the bottom and it covers the screen. Even this one will come off if I want to take it off. I don't want to. It's in good shape. This one was messed up. That's why you can see the electronic ribbon right here on this screen. Nothing wrong with the screen, so I just put a regular protector over it, and it works just fine. I have no problems with this camera whatsoever. I'll fire it up, and you'll see what I get as far as the screen. It's got a really good screen. That is very unnoticeable. This one, when I got it, is a different tale altogether. When I first fired it up, everything was in Japanese. Reason for being, this camera was made for the Japanese market only. Now, if you don't know this, a lot of cameras that are made for just strictly in the Japanese market will only have Japanese loaded into it. But what you don't know is, and you may be able to do this on some other cameras, I found out through lots of research that on Sony, you can go in there and open up the multi-language and change some of the major settings. So I did that. I downloaded the software, went in here, opened up everything. Uh, one of the other things they have is limited record time on these cameras from in Japan. I was able to turn that off so it's unlimited record time. Once you hit record, five minutes, 20 minutes or battery dead, one of the two. And I was able to get into English. That was the major thing is get into the English language and other languages if you wanted to with this camera. Didn't cost me anything extra to do that. It just took a little time, a little persistence because when it tried it the first time, it really didn't want to do it. But the second time I went into it, got it, and she runs just fine as you'll see it's in English. Everything is in English. You go through the display, you go through the menu, and everything is in English. It's not in Japanese. Now, this one does offer Wi-Fi. I do not have it turned on. I don't really want it turned on. I don't use it as much as I do the Wi-Fi on this Canon right here, because I have used that a time or two. 
but I've been shooting videos on these cameras for a little bit now. So above, I'm going to leave a couple of videos I have shot with these cameras this year already. The major thing I like about them is they're small, they're light, they don't weigh very much, they don't weigh as much as this, and this one's, this one's a light camera, but it's a big camera. But I have used both of these to record videos this year, and like I said, I'll leave those above when I went to the uh, lake and when I went to shoot the video for the gazelle tent. Both videos were shot on this camera and this camera. So, <clears throat> that's something I've been playing with this year. Am I not using the Canon anymore? Well, I'm using the Canon to record this. Um, Canon's my trusted video camera and I really like it. But I wanted a little challenge this year with these two Sonys. I actually carry this one every day um, with this lens configuration, not this lens. I usually... Most of the time, unless I'm using both cameras on the same shoot, don't even use this lens at all or this body. Um, but if I need a backup camera to shoot some footage, um, I'll, I'll use this. One of the things I'm going to do when I start doing some more of the off-road trips this year, <clears throat> I will be using these guys. Because they're cheaper than this big thing behind us that... I, I, I couldn't replace it right now if I had to as far as money wise because it'd be a lot money out of pocket whereas this and this might lose a couple hundred a couple hundred dollars and that's it and I wouldn't feel as bad if this one got dunked or this one got dunked in a mud puddle or broken because you know something silly happened but I would this thing so anyways that's it guys I wanted to talk to you about these two Sony's these are the Alpha NX5N, NX5R. This one was American made or American production style camera. This one was for Japan only. But I broke it open and now it's worldwide. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and a little bit about these two cameras. And I hope to see you on the next one. Be prepared.